This video is to show you how to tear apart and repair your Club Runner golf caddy. It's not meant to be comprehensive. It's not going to be a step-by-step. -step. Good place to start would be to get your manual. Go to Club Runner uh, Manual Motogolf.com and you can download a blow-up parts diagram along with a description of the operation and a complete parts list. Also the phone number and the um, contact information for Paradigm Sports where you can get your parts. This is the Club Runner itself. It's a pretty simple machine. The newer ones are of course, uh, you know, remote operated. And this one is not, but it walks along next to you. It's a workhorse. It keeps on going. It's easy to repair. If you've never torn anything apart before, this might not be the job for you, but if you're just wondering what's inside, I'm going to give you a, a quick look because I couldn't find anything else out on YouTube, which was pretty amazing in itself. The Minn Kota is the same machine. There's a couple of electronic differences, but for the most part, all of the mechanical parts are the same. Okay, you want to get rid of that front wheel. Just lift that lever like I just showed you and take a look behind the wheel and you'll see a little tab down there. There's three of them. And when you flip it over, you're going to reach underneath and you're going to release those three tabs. And that'll let the um, plate pop off so you can get at the bolt to release the wheel. Sometimes they pop out real easy. Sometimes they're a little harder, but just reach underneath. And as long as you know they're there, you'll be able to find them by feel. If you need to, you can just finish the job with a screwdriver and pop it off. Okay, there's a retaining ring that's got to come off. It's a split ring, so you'll need the tool to insert into the uh, split ring, spread it apart, and lift it off. Get a good handle on it, make sure it's in there good, or it'll go flying across the room. There you go. Remember to put everything aside in the order that you took it apart because I'm not going to show you how to put it back together. After the split ring, there's a washer, and then the wheel will just lift right off. Underneath the wheel, there's the clutch assembly. Now we're looking at the left side of the machine right now as you're standing behind it. This is on the left. You lift off the clutch. The clutch keeps the cart from rolling backwards, and uh, we'll talk about that. Sometimes there's a problem with the clutches. The clutch falls into a pin. Now that pin is just a, you know, a piece of steel that goes through the axle. Sometimes it'll slide right out, sometimes it needs a little help. In this case, it needs a little, a little more help, so I'm going to tap it through. And once you get that pin out of there, there's nothing holding the axle in on that side. So just go ahead and save that pin. That's a, a pin that you'll, you'll want to have on hand because those pins will break occasionally and they're cheap, but they're best gotten from the, uh, the parts supply manufacturer. Now, there's the mounting bearing. Those mounting bearings wear out. Again, there's only two, two bolts holding them in, so they're easy to change. Best way to do it is to slide the axle back. So you, and here's a look at what a worn axle looks like and a good axle. That's the good axle. And there is a worn axle. And that's from letting that mounting bearing get too worn and it starts to eat away at the axle and eventually it'll just break and then you'll need a new axle as well. That mounting bearing is dirt cheap, only costs a few bucks, so you want to keep some of those on hand if you're going to maintain your own cart. This is the other side of the machine. This is the, the gearbox. You'll need a star point screwdriver. Take out the six screws. If you've got a Minn Kota machine, they're not star point, they're just Phillips. But either way, take out the six screws, and then you should be able to lift the cover right off. And 
there it is. Now this one's not too bad inside. You want to clean that up if it's got a lot of crud in there. Sometimes you can you get a lot of dirt and dust. Okay, inside the gear case you've got you know three gears essentially and a belt. Now you'd think the belt might be a problem point, but I've rarely seen a belt actually break. So there's nothing holding the axle in right now. You should be able to just work it straight up and pull it right out. Sometimes it binds a little bit, give it a little bit of help, but you shouldn't really have to tap it. You should be able to, uh, to work it out by hand. Now that gear on the axle is held in place by a roll pin right through the axle. There it is. And sometimes that roll pin will break. So if your cart motor is running and your uh, wheels aren't turning, one of those two pins, either this roll pin or the pin that I showed you on the axle, could be broken. Cheap repair, but you got to take it apart to do it. Now I'm taking the belt off of the motor gear. You just have to work the belt up. You can lift that gear right out and gradually get the belt to come off of the motor. At that point, you'll want to inspect that gear. Make, I've never really seen one of those go bad. Make sure everything is, is good. Take a look at the belt. Um, it's good to have a spare belt on hand, but again, I've never really seen a belt break. They're, they're pretty durable. Usually if your uh, wheels aren't spinning and your motor's turning, it's a pin, not the belt. Okay, belt looks good. You see those three screws? Those are the three screws that hold the motor in place. So if you're going to change out the motor, which I have had to do on occasion, Okay, either it gets noisy or I've had one actually come apart. Flip the machine over, take out these four screws on that bottom plate. Underneath that bottom plate is an electronics unit. That electronic unit has, I believe, six wires, two of them from the motor, two of them from the battery, and then one from the speed control. And sometimes it gets pretty cruddy. Now, this is an old model built pre-mid-90s. These things are workhorses. They can last forever. So you pull those two wires out, the red and the black one that you're looking at. That's the uh, speed control plug. You want to give that a good spray, clean that up. So you take those two wires off to disconnect the motor. They're just spade connectors. They'll, they'll slide right out. So they're connected. Now you just go back to the other side and you can take out those three screws and then your motor will just lift right out. Now the motors are rebuildable. See on the motor there's a crown gear and it also has a roll pin in it. Uh, one time I've seen one of those roll pins break. So again, motor spinning, wheels aren't turning, but it's a roll pin. You can actually get it at a hardware store if you choose not to order it from Paradigm Sports. Just cleaning up the electronics unit. Some of the crud off of it. All right, that's the clutch. There's a clutch on each side of the axle. The clutch is what keeps the cart from rolling backwards. You should be able to turn one side of it by hand and only in one direction. But there's a left clutch and a right clutch. So as you're standing behind the machine, if you look carefully, you'll see this one's stamped with an R. That's the right clutch. That's on the gearbox side. The left clutch is on the mounting bearing side. So putting it back together, okay, you just reverse the process. Okay, getting into the uh, handle. The most common problem with the handle is the handle itself breaks, so you'd need to get a new handle housing. Uh, if you take the cart up and down a few curbs, you might find that out. The handle has one bolt that goes all the way through. There's a captive nut on the other side, so you want to remove that. Then you can pull the uh, speed control knob. Just pull it straight back and it'll come off. 
It's got a D-shaped hole, so it goes back on in the right place. Inside there is the uh, speed control potentiometer, the rheostat, and you take a take a uh, socket wrench and you can loosen up that nut that holds the rheostat on. Just loosen it up some. Now there's three more screws in that same side of the handle. You just take those three screws out. They're Phillips head. And then the handle will just uh, split in half and you'll have access to what's inside. I have had to change out a broken switch. I've had to change out a, a speed control rheostat. Um, you can either buy that as an assembly or you can buy the components individually. But usually, usually it's the handle itself that you want to change, so you have to take that all apart. But pretty quick job, pretty easy. Yep. So there it is. Just take the handle apart. You'll see that everything fits nicely. There's lots of slots for the wires. And inside you only you only have the switch and you have the speed control. The switch pretty much stays in that side of the uh, speed control. One side will just come off. The switch will, will sit in its spot pretty securely. Nothing holding it there. Just tension. There's the switch. And there's the speed control. And that's it.